ثُمَّ بَعَثْنَاهُمْ لِنَعْلَمَ أَيُّ الْحِزْبَيْنِ أَحْصَى لِمَا لَبِثُوا أَمَدًا نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ نَبَأَهُمْ بِالْحَقِّ إِنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ آمَنُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ وَزِدَنَاهُمْ هُدًى وَرَبَطْنَا عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ إِذْ قَامُوا فَقَالُوا رَبُّنَا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَنْ نَدْعُوَ مِنْ دُونِهِ إِلَهًا We all give thanks to Almighty Allah who has given us the opportunity of being here today to witness this great occasion. In this great center, in this great center, uh, Nur al Islamic Foundation, Muasas Nur al al Islamia, in the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, Nigeria. Today, being Saturday, 2nd of Shaban, 1443, after the Hijra of Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from Mecca to Medina, uh, which is equivalent to 5th of March, 2022. All of us are giving thanks to Almighty Allah for being alive and also for being here. Let me also recognize, as have been done earlier by the master ceremony, to recognize the chairman of this occasion. To recognize our royal highnesses, our directors, our chief imams, teachers of this great institution, parents, students, gentlemen of press, security personnel, brothers and sisters who are opportune to be in this occasion. Let me from a start congratulate Sheikh Malam Garba Yahya al Yolawi for a wonderful initiative. And that will encourage the younger generation coming up that is not a matter of age but is the caliber and the quality you possess to promote and progress the activities of Islam while you are living. I congratulate you, Yolawi, and I ask Allah to barak wa Allah to bless your move and to make the younger ones to do better while we are still living. My topic of discussion is knowledge and its importance, particularly in the Muslim world. This topic is so great and wide, and it will be difficult for a student like my humble self to present a discussion on this very important topic in an hour or less. But I believe I'm going to say two or three things that are known to serve as a reminder to the speaker himself and to all of us. The chairman of this occasion Let me say here that among what Allah has blessed this Ummah with, 
which no any Ummah before us can compete with us is the issue of knowledge. And that was why it's not accidental that the first verses that were revealed to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, were centered on the issue of education. It is a priority. As great as shirk is in Islam, which is the only offense Allah will not pardon after death, as great as Tawheed, which is monetizing, oneness of Allah, which all the messengers before Rasulullah preached, and which also he lamented on, which is the certificate of entering the Jannah, it was not discussed because knowledge is a priority. Allah informed Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, to communicate Rasulullah sallam by the verses of recitation. Iqra, and he said, Ma ana bikari. Iqra, ma ana bikari. Iqra, bismi rabbika alladhi khalak, khalak al insana min alak, Iqra wa rabbuka al akram, alladhi Allah wa bil kalam, alam al insana ma lam yalam. These five verses were the first verses revealed in the Quran to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is informing us that knowledge is great. Knowledge is a priority. Knowledge cannot be compared with any other honor. It cannot be compared with wealth because today we are living in a world of materialism where people prefer to worship materials. We are living in a world whereby little is the concern for the life coming. People want to enjoy and maximize their enjoyment of this life, whether through halal, whether through haram. Now, knowledge is much bigger than materials. Knowledge is a power that you don't need to go into competition or politics before you have it. Knowledge is what Allah has given to all the messengers. Some messengers were poor. Some could not live long. Some have no even followers. But all of them were blessed with knowledge. And that's why Allah posed a question to those who are sensing, those who are in their normal senses, regardless of their religion. Allah says, Kul hal yalamun, la Are you going to compare a community of knowledge and a community that is ignorant? Are you going to compare a personality that is highly knowledgeable with somebody who is in darkness of ignorance? Of course, if you are mentally fit, the answer is very clear that knowledge cannot be compared with ignorance. It is because of knowledge that today we are coming here to assemble. And I'm using an instrument that will communicate far. Far from where we are. It is knowledge that will make this program to be seen globally at the very point we are discussing here the whole world is joining us. It is knowledge. And when we talk of knowledge, we are not restricting ourselves to the knowledge of the Quran or the Sunnah. We are talking broadly. We are talking very wide. We are saying knowledge that is of benefit to mankind. That was why when Jibril was informing Rasulullah Sallam to read, he did not say read the Quran alone. He said, Ikra and I open a blank certificate of reading. Read anything readable. Read what is going to be of benefit to mankind. And Rasulullah Sallam read widely. And that's why he was meant to be the most successful leader ever. The most successful leader ever. Because, number one, he has 
what it takes of knowledge knowledge and when it comes to implementing knowledge Rasulullah implemented the whole content of the Quran and this was why when his wife Aisha was asked about the character of Rasulullah she said to them the character of Rasulullah is just the Quran read the Quran and you see Rasulullah practically Brothers and sisters, since it is a consensus for those who are mentally fit that knowledge is key to success at the family level, at the societal level, in fact at the global level. And the Muslims are given the command from the Quran to seek for knowledge. The reason why today the Ummah are lacking behind key to the reasons is the issue of knowledge. If you take a case study of Nigeria, for instance, you find out that we have the majority, the number. There is, there is no any, there is no any research that will prove that Muslims are having the number in this country. And by mere calculation, ordinarily you can get this very clear. But unfortunately, the impact of that number is not felt positively because the percentage of those who are to be called, those who are having the education, the percentage is so limited that the impact is not even felt. Because we are not talking of knowledge that has no meaning. Knowledge that is not for implementation. That's why some scholars categorize knowledge into two parts. Knowledge of benefit to your life in this world and in, of course in the hereafter. And the knowledge that is acquired for harmfulness. That's the knowledge of the shaitan. You are aware the discussion between shaitan and Allah himself. Ta'ala. When Allah commanded all the angels who bow before our grandfather alayhi salatu wasalam. And you know the reason why Allah uplifted our grandfather over the angels who are not sinning, who are not drinking, who are not eating, who are not male, who are not female, who doesn't have even personal desires. Allah raised our grandfather above them because of knowledge. Because of knowledge. Allah asked them to identify and name some items which they could not. And Allah said, Ya Adam, ambi'uhum bi asma'ihim. Falamma ambahum bi asma'ihim. Kala alam akul lakum. Inni alam wala ta'alamu. Tell them the names of this item. And our grandfather informed the angels who know not of the names. And that gives him upper hand over and above the angels. And you are aware of the sin of our grandfather in the Jannah and his wife. But shaitan, who is also knowledgeable, a negative knowledge, was the one that came and confused our grandfather because he has rejected to bow before our grandfather. And the, the argument is that he said, Ana khairun minhu khalaktani min narin wa khalaktahu min teen. You created me, that is shaitan, from the fire and Adam from the clay and mud, so why should I bow before him? Look at ag arrogancy. And of course, among the characteristic of those who are having poisonous knowledge, a bastardized knowledge, is a knowledge that is accompanied with I mean, being arrogant. Easily you can find a knowledgeable person very, very arrogant. Very, very arrogant because he knows that he has a degree above those who are ignorant. And that makes him to feel better. And that makes him inclined to being arrogant. And that was the case of Shaitan who refused to bow before our grandfather. Listeners, brothers and sisters, the area of knowledge is key and primary to any success. 
and the biggest source, the biggest source of earning a knowledge that we are referring to is the Quran al Karim. Is the Quran al Karim. Unfortunately, today, little attention is given to the Quran. And that's why the world is growing. The world is advancing in technology and IT. But the world is witnessing crimes that has never existed even in the past. Because the more you are knowledgeable and the more you forget about your creator who endowed that knowledge unto you, the more you create problems unsolved for yourself and for others. That's why there's going to be promotion of crimes in the world, not only in Nigeria. Long as man is improving in education, reaching the whole world in a second, which is a knowledge the world has never witnessed, then automatically it will go alongside with criminality. No amount of security with no apology, no amount of security can deal with the situation until and unless when people go back to Allah and fear him with their knowledge, that's when you are going to have peace. I am not discouraging our personalities of security. I am not discouraging our leaders. I am saying exactly the content of the Quran. When you look at the world that are advanced in technology and sciences, you find out that also they are facing challenges of insecurities. Sisters and brothers, Allah has challenged the world to produce the similitude of the Quran. If you think Quran is not the greatest source of knowledge, Allah challenged the world to produce a manual for living for man like the Quran. Because it is the only book it is the only book in the past and present that discusses all the needs of man. In fact, the needs, she doesn't even know that there are needs. Allah discusses them in the Quran. It is a book that discusses our history. Our history right from our grandfather and Nabi Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. It discusses messengers that came after him. A sound, solid history. It is a book of economics and transaction and business. It is a book that discusses politics. It is a book that discusses sciences. In fact, uh, a scholar said, in only one verse, Allah discusses all the sciences today. People are proud of advancement in knowledge. In only one verse in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah says in that verse, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ واختلاف الليل والنهار والفلك التي تجري في البحر بما ينفع الناس وما انزل الله من السماء من ماء فاحيا به الارض بعد موتها وبث فيها من كل دابه وسيف الرياح وسحاب المسخر بين السماء والارض لايات لقوم يعقلون in only this verse allah discusses all segments of sciences there is no sign left untouched in only a part of the quran the creation of the heaven and the earth, the rain, the geography, the agriculture, the sheep flowing on the sea without sinking, all these are discussed and summarized in only a book of the Quran. Now, it is a book of sciences. It discusses medicine. It discusses, it discusses almost everything you can think of and beyond. That's why when a, one Malam was discussing the issue of movement of the sun, of course, it has been claimed in science that it's stagnant. The movement of the planets, of course, the earth itself. And Allah says, وَشَّمْ سُتَجْرِي لِمُسْتَقَرِّ لَهَا ذَلِكَ تَقْدِيرُ الْعَزِيزُ الْعَلِيمُ Allah says, and the, the sun itself is having its own orbit of movement. Now, if a scientist debunk this, we are going to inform him that probably your gadgets of experiments are yet to detect what Allah has said. But a time shall come when science also will confirm the movement of the sun as he has actually confirmed the movement of the earth. Just few 
uh, months ago, there has been discovered another planet which was not known is known today. Scientists are now knowing it. But by the Quranic knowledge, it must have been there already. Maybe there are other planets that are going to be discovered in future. So if science contradicts anything of the Quran, the Quran remains firm and unchangeable. My brothers and sisters, Allah says to mankind generally, Ya ayyuhan nas, u'ubudu rabbakum, alladhi khalakakum, walladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattakun, alladhi ja'alakum al-arda firasha, wa samaa bina'a, wa anzala min al-samaa ma'a, fa akhraj bihi min al-samarati rizqan lakum, fala taj'alu lillahi andadan wa antun ta'alamun, wa in kuntum fi raybim, bimma nazzalna ala abdina, فأتوا بسورة من مثله ودؤوا شهداءكم من دون الله إن كنتم صادقين فإن لم تفعلوا ولن تفعلوا فاتقوا النار التي وقودها الناس والهجارة ويد للكافرين. now these verses are in بكرة first part of بكرة Allah communicated the whole mankind regardless of their religion regardless of their nation regardless of their color this is a challenge to mankind and take it Anywhere Allah is saying, Ya your nurse. The content of the verses that will follow is a challenge to man. No man sensible can debunk the content of the verse. And here is not an exception. Allah says, Oh you mankind, worship your Lord who has created you and created those before you so, at, so that you are God conscious. He is the one that spread down for you the earth, built for you the heaven, send down the rain, plant germinate, you have food you consume, which you can never deny. Nobody can do this except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if anybody can do this, let him challenge the Quran and do it. We have never seen a group of scientists that have created another heaven for us to live in. And another earth to represent the one we are on. And a rain to come down through their wish or decree. They can only tell you the formulation of the cloud and of course the coming down of the rain, but they are not the source of power that gives us the rain and of course the germination of the plant. It is only Allah who is doing this. Then Allah says about the book. He has revealed a book. If you are doubting that book, then you should produce only a chapter. The chapters in the Quran is 114. The smallest chapter is 73 verses. Now Allah says, produce only a chapter. This challenge has existed for the past 1,400 years ago. Till date, the Arabs or the non-Arabs cannot produce even a verse, talk less of a chapter. That is enough a confidence for Muslims to know. Allah has given them treasure of knowledge that they should never ever play with. And Allah is guiding the book himself. Why that Allah's one what Allah has left the book unguided, maybe Quran could have taken different dimensions of changes of having different versions. Allah says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu la hafidun. We are the ones who reveal the book and we are the ones guiding it. And that's why the Quran in Unugu the Quran in America, the Quran in Nigeria, the Quran in Ukraine, the Quran in everywhere, it remains the same and nobody can change the content. Now, that is enough for Muslims to ponder. More wonderfully, more wonderfully, the Quran is being memorized by the Arabs who own the long language, by an Igbo man, by a Yoruba, by a Fulani, by any other tribe of the world, they can put the whole content into memory. There is no book. There is more book that is as big as 10% pages of the Quran that can be memorized the way people are memorizing the Quran. It is a book of knowledge. It's a miracle that remains forever. And that's why Muslims are supposed to rally around the Quran, male and female, young and aged, to make sure they have time for the Quran. Unfortunately, very unfortunately, some of our intellectuals who have reached the level of doctors, professors, you find somebody specializing in the field without knowing the connection of his field with the Quran. And that comes our politicians. 
There is no politics that Allah did not discuss in the Quran. But more with no apology, a number good of our politicians have no connection directly with the meaning of the Quran. And that's why crisis. And that's why money politics. And that's why killings over the world because no connection with the leadership of the Quran. Until and unless this area is addressed, scholars must be deep into the Quran, not only memorizing and understanding, but implementing. Leaders, marketers, professionals, other engineers, other doctors, they must have their route back to the Quran for a proper reformation. Until that is done, we are going to go a long way in suffering, even here. That's why Allah confirmed that. He said, Woman, a'arada and zikri, that is the Quran. Whosoever turn away from the Quran, for in the lahu ma'ishdan danka, they are going to live a narrow life, a very difficult life, a crisis life. When ashuruhum, yom al qiyama ti'ama, and they are going to be raised on the day of qiyama blind, and they will complain. Lima hashatani ama. Why are we blind today? Allah will communicate back. That, that was how the Quran was revealed unto you. And you are blind towards the Quran. And today we are, making, we are making you to be blind. And today we are going to forget about you. So a Muslim shouldn't play. With having time on daily basis to recite the Quran. Now, to our parents... Whom Allah has blessed, whom Allah has so loved, whom are dear to Allah, that they endeavor the pain of taking their children to the Quranic schools. This is Allah's mercy on parents. Parents who are having this opportunity must be more thankful to Allah because it's a sign of their success in this life and a very big sign of success in the hereafter. You are aware, those who are lucky to have their children memorizing the Quran, on the day of Qiyamah, Allah will crown them in public, in the billions of those who are there. When people are confused, when there is no shade, except the only shade of Allah, when the whole continent and the whole universe are gathered together in one place. It's going to be a big honor that angels of honor are going to be sent to come and crown you. With apology to our Royal Highness, when he was brought in a very special car, I noticed all the organizers rushed towards the vehicle. I was looking from a far distance. I said, who must be this gentleman? That everybody rushed to welcome. The door was open for him. He came out. Walking. Like the way our royal fathers walked. And a group of people walking behind him. Until when they see him through his honorable seats. That is very daring. Even the attire he used differs from any other person. Now on the day of Iyama. If you are going to be honored by the angels of Allah, by crowning you in the billions and millions of people who are there, I think it's enough for one to make sure his child memorized the Quran. And in this world, that child who knows the Quran will continue to pray for you hard. I could only forget when I remember my father who is in his grave that I did not actually pray for him. In every second I remember him. And I think it is because of the power of the Quran. A number of those who are billionaires, who left the billions and millions behind, before they are buried, because the children lack the Quran, they have started fighting on the wealth their father has set for them. For those of us who are being exposed into secrets of families because of confidence, you find out that when you trace the history of those children, those children have no connection with the Quran. In fact, some of them read abroad. The father suffered on them. The family suffered on them. And now they are not bothering with the corpse of their father or mother. They are only after the dunya. So be extra careful with the opportunity Allah has given you 
by sending these, these young ones what you cannot achieve, they can achieve it for you. In this life by prayers, in the heart after by honor. Some parents in the paradise are going to ask Allah, why are we placed in this position? This position is too big for us. Then Allah will communicate them. It is not your own work. It is the work of your children whom you left behind. Praying sincerely for you. It is that that has raised your position to be in where you are. And your children are your work. That's why automatically anything your child is doing after your death, positively, that reflects into your account automatically. It is what you taught him that will always reflect in your record. That's why those who opportunity to have children, never you delay in making sure you engage them with the Quran. You engage them with the Quran. As to my own uh, junior brothers who are here as students, make sure you utilize the opportunity given to you by making sure you read the Quran, you memorize the Quran, you understand the Quran, you are part of the Quran. I know of uh, a child that memorized the Quran in this our country at the age of eight and a half years. At the age of nine, if you ask him, what do you possess of knowledge? He will tell you, ask me the Quran. I know all part of the Quran. You know, at the age of nine, he doesn't even know anything. But he knows the Quran. Look, it is only the Quran that you can set on reading and reading with the comma and the full stop and the pages. It's just like a computer brain for those who memorize the Quran. When our Hafiz was reciting, and people are looking at him, he can recite from where he started to the end of the Quran. Because the memory will just be opening the pages for him. The full stop, the comma, the full stop, the comma. That's why memorizers of Quran are professors. I once said this in Zone 3 Mosque, in the presence of high caliber individuals. I addressed the fact of the Quran as excellencies. And somebody challenged me that, oh, what excellencies? I say excellencies super, with addition excellencies, because they have the content of Allah's words in their brain. I urge you young ones to make sure you use the opportunity given to you by your parents and your schools to save us in future, even if you are not around, by making us proud. Quran doesn't deny you to know the Western education. It perfects your Western education. It makes you to be colorful. It makes you to excel. I always give example of where I'm teaching Al-Manar in life come here. The school produce who fast and science students by excellence in their fields of endeavor. A number of them in abroad competes and hands down whosoever is competing in their own actually faculties. It has produced excellent power. Doctors with their Quran memorized, engineers with their Quran memorized, they are different from any other knowledge person because they are proud of what they know, they are first class material and they have the Quran. These are the type of imams we want to produce in future. Today we are lacking because most of our religious leaders are not balanced in education. They know the Quran, they know the Arabic, they don't know the Western education, they are seen as people who are ignorant. But when you have the first class in sciences, in chemical engineering, you memorize the Quran, you work in the MPC, and then you are the chief imam of national mosques, there is little somebody can tell you. You will control your speech. You will make an impact. Unfortunately, today, parents are not assisting to produce such type of individuals. Let me round up my talk by congratulating those who are part and parcel of this move. Not only here, in so many places there are parents today whom Allah has given the Iman. Men and women. In fact, some women you'll be surprised that there are more than men in terms of sponsoring the knowledge of the Quran. It does not deny them of the Western education. It perfects it. In fact, the Western man knows that we can combine both education. The brain of a Muslim is so big and so wide that it can consume any kind of education long as the Quran is actually to be built on. Let me again thank the organizers 
for seeing me worthy of being invited here and not only to be here ordinary also to give a talk uh, the little I've said of goodness is from Allah to Allah any shortcoming or mistake is from my own humble self I ask him the most high to pardon me and to bless all of us and then to count this center among the centers that the Ummah not of Nigeria but the world is going to be proud of that will be achieved by your cooperation and assistance I'm quite sure with the faces I'm seeing here, I don't see the number to be little. This number is big enough. It's tight, high time for Muslims not to wait for anybody who is absent. Forge ahead, and Allah will be with you. Thank you for listening. The best you could do to a brother while talking is to listen. You have done that. I pray Allah, to, Allah together. These beautiful faces I'm seeing behind and in front, and even far behind, in general to feed those, recalling and remembering our days in Nigeria when we are in this type of programs. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.